and we are live. And thank you for joining us again. This is uh, this is day twenty one since I left LA to head to have my screenplay turned into a movie. And yesterday I was interviewing Kevin here, Kevin Wiggins, and we got we got thrown off the internet. <laughs> I guess it's hard to maintain that internet right? uh, connection out here in the yeah we're out here in the middle back country. of nowhere <laughs> and uh, oh I meant to tell people that we're going live we would have gotten more people uh, asking us questions here but um, so I didn't do that maybe I should run inside and grab my phone and do that I don't know what do you think yeah all right so uh, let's uh, tell our audience talk to them while I'm keeping them busy while I'm going to get my phone all right <laughs> I'll see what I do what uh, you got? when we left off Yesterday, he just asked me about going to LA. Well, I hadn't done that in all this time. And I think when I got started, I looked around at some of the actors here and in Santa Fe, and I thought, gosh, there's actors that are 10 times as good as I am, and they've gone to LA for a year or two, and not even got uh, representation. And so I thought, well, you know, I'm probably a dime a dozen in LA. I'll, I'll stay here and see what happens. And after a bit, I had a, a family and a mortgage and, and a home. And I didn't want to leave my home to go out to L.A. and start over again. And so I think what hap has happened lately is that um, New Mexico has become more of a film center due to certain government incentives. And now with all of this COVID and all this, uh, we're sending our, uh, our auditions in digitally. And so I'm, I'm interested to see how important it is where your geographic location is anyway. This will increase the competition, certainly, but uh, it's going to be a whole new world. So I never moved to L.A., and I, I'm not planning to now. Right, so that's the thing. So that's where we got cut off yesterday because – and I don't think it got it, but I, I would suggest if you want to be an actor, go to L.A. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess unless you want to act in theater. And, you know, you're proof that that's not – not only is that not necessarily true, you might be more successful if you're not in L.A., if, if you're in a town like this or Atlanta where there's a lot of production, but there's maybe the competition is not as bad, right? I mean, if you went to L.A., I'm not sure what the competition for uh, you would be, how many other actors like you are. Maybe I always here. imagined I'd be in L.A. lined up to wait to go into the audition. I'd, I'd look ahead. Part of, the, part of the, my uniqueness, I think, of it. This is that uh, my acting coach told me early on. He said, Kevin, don't lose the accent, and you'll be just like everyone else. So I've, right. I, haven't, I haven't tried to get rid of it, and I don't do accents. This is all I got. <laughs> and uh, I think it works for a lot of the roles. You know, it's stereotypical, but I think storytelling does involve a lot of stereotype. And so I play the hard-ass cop or the soldier or this or that, a border patrolman. And I think some people find it intimidating that they, they, they bring something to mind when they hear that southern accent. That for whatever, you know, for better or for worse, what is the accent? What is it? Southeast Texas. Southeast Texas. Yeah, Southeast Texas. You grew up in the swamps. Yeah. Liberty, Texas, between Houston and Beaumont. In the swamps. Leeches, mosquitoes, poisonous snakes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a lot of snakes and sharks in L.A. too. Yeah. Dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I thought that was really interesting. I actually woke up thinking about that, that conversation, that mm -hmm. part of the conversation that uh, you don't need to be in L.A. because I think that's got to be encouraging for a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, to I mean, I don't know if they want, you know, want to move out to New Mexico or you got to kind of be right for the part. I mean, obviously, they're shooting a lot of Westerns out here. Correct. I mean, a lot of the stuff you're in, it's Western or Western themed because mm -hmm. of the nature. The geography. Of yeah. They, they come here for the weather and the scenery and uh, we've got that in spades, you know. Yeah. I mean, like, look, even our uh, what's his name? Brad, our bus driver. Right, <laughs> I'm like, you need to be in the movies. This guy looks like he's right off a horse ranch, well, and, he, and he, is. he is. He is. He's got like eight heads of horses or something. On a horse ranch. Invited me out to ride, as a matter of fact, which I'm going to take him up on because that's sort of been my entree into the acting world. And my first bit was as a horseman extra on Lonesome Dove. Did I mention that yesterday? Yeah, we did. We talked Park about on camera. Yeah, it was one of the first yeah. things because I, I said Tommy Lee Jones, right? It was on some yeah, yeah. Was big inspiration to see that guy. I thought, dang, if he can get the movie, <laughs> maybe I can too. Now, what we didn't talk about or we didn't get to is actually a movie you're in that I absolutely love. And it did terribly. Oh, it did yeah. terribly. But I love it. I think it was 
I mean, obviously they spent a gazillion dollars on this movie and it was a great old fashioned Western, but it was also an adventure movie, a kid's movie or a family movie, an action movie, a comedy. And yeah. it's the Lone Ranger. Yeah. The Lone Ranger with uh, Johnny Depp and Army Hammer and Gore Verbinski, right? Directed yeah, yeah. it at right coming off of, I guess the pirates of the Caribbean. I think mm-hmm. he did three of those and uh, for Disney. And uh, I remember me and Schwartzy going to see that in the theater, watching that movie, yeah. and it tanked terribly. Yeah, which I yeah, was, that's I was, too bad. It is too bad. That, you know that was going to change my life. You know. Oh yeah. Residuals. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we didn't get to the residual talk yet. But I think one of the things I loved about that movie, and uh, I'll let you jump in here in a second, is how. Um, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of computer generated effects in it, but it. It doesn't look like it looks like, you know, instead of computer crowds, there were real crowds instead of a computer town. It was a, a real town. That was a real train moving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, they spared so, no expense. That's the most expensive project I've ever worked on in all my years. The most expensive. They so built their own Western town. They didn't want to use anyone else's. Built a railroad track. Wait, they built their own town just because they didn't want to use anywhere else. Right. Wanna, yeah. And then they took it down because they didn't want anybody else using it afterwards. <laughs> Wow. Packed it up. It's gone. And where was that town? That was uh, west of Albuquerque on the Rio Puerco. Okay. But you traveled around a lot for that movie. That was just Yeah, we went out here. to Monument Valley, Valley and Canyon de Chez to shoot some of that as well. So d- you got any great stories from? Um, yeah, oh, sure. You're going to have to shut me up after a while. <laughs> you know, they, they spent a lot of money here that stayed here. Uh, they hired a lot of people, a lot of technicians, a lot of extras, a, lot, uh, a few actors as well. They built a parking lot, big as two Walmart parking lots, and put gravel and street lights and everything. <laughs> wow. There used to be, on old Route 66, this one stretch to get their bumper-to-bumper traffic driving out there before sunrise on those mornings, and big buses carrying everybody from the parking lots up to set. It was stunning, the money they spent. I, I, it was great they were here. It's too bad to look at it as well. They spent money here to stay here. It really was just a good economy. And, uh, what was it like walking in on that set? It was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's a Western movie. Are you kidding me? But like it was a, a big fun. one. A, there's yeah. like tons of extras, right? All in period clothes. Oh, and- yeah. It's, it's sometimes surreal to look around and see all of that. If you're not seeing all the camera gear and all the modern right. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, part of the part of the fun there was meeting Army Hammer. I didn't really, you know, I recognized the name and I knew he was somebody, but I didn't really, I didn't really get it. And uh, when I first saw him, he's really tall. And he was bent over at the waist, introducing himself to this girl who was bringing around sandwiches. The, the catering girl, the craft services girl, taking the time to introduce himself and chat her up a minute and get to know her. Yeah, right. I mean, he could have been hiding in his trailer, but he, he, I just saw him and I thought, wow, that, that's a gracious guy. What a sweetheart, because I didn't know her name. Yeah. And I thought, wow, what a gentleman. Well, you told me you didn't really know who he was. I, 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 I recognized he was from a, understand what a star he was. And so we spent a lot of time sitting on the horses between setups and takes. And and I would do what, what my family calls hoorah. I would hoorah. <laughs> I mean, I'd pick on him. And it, it's picking on somebody in a good-natured way, and I'd pick on him. Hoorah. Hoorah. I, I hoorah him real good and proper. And then one weekend <laughs> I go home, and my daughter brings home a video, or we watch something. I don't know if it was Jay Edgar or that one about the computer. Yeah, thing. The Facebook movie. And I, I saw Army. Social Network. And I, I said, damn, man, he's somebody. So I get back to set Monday, and we're on the horses. I said, damn, Army, I've been hoorahing you for a week or two. I, I didn't know you were somebody. I just thought you were another chucklehead. He says, well, I am. I love that guy. He was so sweet. Yeah. So nice. And I saw him do some things I thought were kind of funny. Uh, you know, for this uh, picture, I had to sign a health form saying, I will not ride my motorcycle. I won't climb mountains and I won't snow ski. And those are three things I do a lot. So I said, okay. Did I, I sign that same form? I don't know. Did you not read it? No, I did not read it. I, well, did. I was like, oh, I'm in a movie. <laughs> And I've not done those things. How much do I owe? (laughs) (laughs) Well, we were at Monument Valley, and the Army had a dirt bike. Not street legal, a dirt bike, like a motocross (laughs) thing. And I'm looking around, and here he is off in the territory. You know those rock formations? They call them the mittens. 
in the background. He comes tear assing across the <laughs> the scenery on this dirt bike, no helmet or anything. And I'm thinking Ooh. he's got to have the some insurance guy around here. <laughs> and nobody said anything about being off trail or being dangerous, and he just did it. And he, the person okay. being the the star, of a I guess. Movie. Well, what a great guy! That was a, another experience. Most of those stars I've met have been really, really great. It's been a lot of fun. It's very loud here. I don't know if it's affecting. It's very windy and cold today. He's got to talk louder. I think like that's in a stagecoach. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah we're having an intimate scene, but it's got to be loud. We're going to bring it in a little closer. Anyway, that was the Lone Ranger. So, um, what fun to be on a horse riding around Monument Valley and camping the shade. We spent a lot of time, us rangers, sitting on the horses when we had a quiet moment between takes, mumbling to each other like this. Man, isn't this great? Looking around at our costumes in the movie and saying, can you believe this? This is great. What a great gig. We were, we were, we were always full of gratitude on that. Everybody. So happy to be there and, and, and be involved. How many weeks were you on that one? I think about seven. And how much screen time did you end up with? I, know. <laughs> I don't know. I was deep <laughs> Two minutes. I think I had one line. I said, uh. Must have run out of hanging rope in Oklahoma. A close up, you know, have a close up. <laughs> anyway, it was great fun. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great fun. Got to ride a horse. Shot. I recognized in the background it looked just like some of the John Wayne movies. The same scenery. I swear, Andy, I got home and watched one of those John Wayne movies. I don't know. I don't remember which one it was. And I could see in the background it, it was the camera was set in a similar place that ours was for one of our shots. And I saw that. I shed a tear. It's like, man, oh, yeah. I, I can't. I've died and gone to heaven. Yeah. I rode a horse out there at the same place John Wayne did on camera. And I, I'm done. You know, if I died tomorrow, you, you're good I, to go. I don't have a I don't have a bucket list anymore. Not after that. Hey, so we got a someone join us, Chris Lavity. Hey, Chris, how are you? Chris just booked. Uh, this is my buddy, and he just booked uh, a kind of a recurring role on a WB show. Chris, what's oh, nice. what's your show? Tell us about your show. This is Kevin. So it looks like our connection again is a little unstable. So I don't, know, I don't know what's happening here. I hope we're yeah. live. I, it's, it looks like we're live. It doesn't say we're not. Um. So, uh, so we were talking uh, earlier about uh, he plays Walker on CW. Hi, he says hi, Kevin. Oh, nice. Hello. <laughs> we got to get you out of here, Chris. You should have been in our movie. Um, Next time, the sequel. Yeah, we're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're writing one. He oh, jumped in. He, the, yeah, we, yeah, we'll do a prequel. Well. I love you too, buddy. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so, uh, Kevin was just telling me right before we were doing this that he uh, also you wrote and you shot and you acted in and cast and costumed and you did your own little web series. Yeah, I did about three episodes. You know, so tell us about that because I think that there, you know, these days, um, these days. The, kind of have to be more than one thing right um an actor a writer you know a content creator and you were even you were saying to me before how you know the casting out here they'll sometimes look at your social media and how big it is and who it could depend on whether you get the job or not whether you have a bigger social media it is you know I, I have no social media i don't do social media so but so but so tell us about you know, creating, doing the, doing your web okay, series. Okay, yeah, I think I, I, it's been a while since I've checked on it. So I think I called it the New America series, and it's a post-apocalyptic vision of the uh, U.S. New Mexico, U.S. Mexico border, and a group of uh, border security incorporated employees that are down there. No firearms. They are out there just to uh, collect the statistics of the bodies and the going comings and goings. They're, they're gathering data. There is no border control, and uh, I don't know how well it worked, but I, uh, I incorporated, I got a Screen Actors Guild contract, I wrote the scripts, made all the costumes, all the props, uh, I did all the, the makeup, special effects, <clears throat> everything, casting. casting, and sometimes I was putting the camera on a tripod, pressing record, running around in front, and showing the sound man how to frame up a picture, and and it was it was frantic, just frantic, just doing everything. But uh, I, you know what, big takeaway for me is it didn't matter if anybody ever saw it anymore. I don't care about that. What I learned was editing 
the actors and myself, I began to see how the performance can change in the editing. I watched myself for hours on end and edited my own, my own performance. That is a singular experience for acting. To just see every nuance and think, wow, if I had looked this way or blanked or had some other emotion. I, I can't really, again, articulate that art, but it was, it was instructive to edit my own performance in the storytelling. So would you suggest it? Absolutely. After going through that, having to get up the crack of dawn, drive an hour and a half out into the desert, and it was awful. Some of my buddies didn't want to come out there because they don't like being out in the desert. It's everything that <laughs> looked like hot. And, and I'm friends with a lot awful. of bums, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but if you can get up every morning and then have to fill out all the SAG paperwork, get everybody dressed, all made up, and then direct and act and shoot the thing on the, on the tripod and sometimes hold the boom. If you do all of that, and you get hired on a, a movie like Andy's movie here, and you just show up, and somebody brings you a burrito and a coffee and <laughs> messes with your costume, when they say action, you're a lot more relaxed and ready to play because you've, you've been through worse. Now, you, you do know? seem very – we're going to put a link below, too. Uh, we'll find some of those episodes. I don't know. Yeah. I did my best. Don't, don't be too critical. <laughs> just remember what I said. I had a big experience. It helped my acting in that regard. After you've been through that kind of boot camp – handle anything else well, i think it's important and and i try to push all my friends too we have i you know when i was growing up we had no distribution i remember oh, yeah. i remember editing on vhs or dvds and you know or dumping on dvds and mailing it to people to try to get them to see it. and that was you ever edited on was, film oh sure oh, yeah oh yeah i still have Take my the things and i still have my 16 millimeter moviola i was playing with i've got one too do you really with, with the, the reels what do you split reels and the do you really i got all that if you stuff. ever get rid of that let me know <laughs> well i will i will please i mean it yeah i've got yeah. all of that the moviola the sound reader the mag track the oh wow i have one that too oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see, get to that you'll that's see that the other there. thing nowadays we don't use film but i started out uh some years ago and shot a I forget it was a 15 or 20 minute thing. I don't think it's on YouTube yet. It's called black and white film. I called it Paradise, New Mexico. And it was kind of a Hunter S. Thompson fear and loathing thing. And I cut it all on film. And um, I think I transferred it to video to, to show it. You know, VHS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that's something I don't know if a lot of actors do. They have that organic experience of cutting film and taping it together and winding these things. It's very primitive. I There's think most editors be, don't have that experience. There's got to be something in that valuable for an actor to see how the shots are framed, how the old guys did the films with, with film, yeah. film, actual film. I remember cutting on film, what it did for me, which was different than today, was I had to think about every cut I made, every frame, because if you cut out a frame and then you you know, you threw it in the trim bin or it fell on the floor and then it didn't work and you got to go back and find that frame. Tape it back and tape it holes. Back. Yep. So every edit, every edit was a thought, like a real deep thought. And now, just like, try this. Oh, try yeah, this. Go oh, back. Try this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. But it was a great experience because it was so hard. Yeah. I don't know. Something get too easy. I guess the only way to put it. Yeah. It's too easy. You don't. You don't appreciate. It. Maybe you don't grow as much. Maybe that's just me. Me being an old guy. Well, I think like anything else in life, right? And definitely in filmmaking, you gain something, you lose something. If you, you know, you, you lose that ability, or you lose that process of, you know, having to think or having to like dig around a trim bin for a frame or a couple frames. You know, you're gaining. You can in that same time edit it 30 different ways, you know, and see, and then it becomes instinctual, I guess. Um, well, I sure wouldn't go back to that. No. I love the digital <laughs> editing. I'll tell you what I love is the iPhone that shoots pretty pretty decent video. Yeah. I, I would not go back. So do you want to act again or direct again? I mean, act again. Direct again? Or oh, I would. Yeah. I, I, I feel comfortable directing, you know, if, I, if I've got a script and I have my take on things. I, I, I immediately form in my idea when I read a script, when I'm reading my part, I immediately have an idea of how I want to do it. I've developed, because I wasn't creative or outgoing to begin with, I've developed some creativity to think about, well, how would it be? How would it look? 
what would what would happen? And I've written enough, not to I've never sold anything, but I've I've fooled with it enough to know when I pick up a script that somebody else has sent me to audition, I immediately start imagining in my mind, I create this virtual reality of how I want to see it. You've seen me on set where I say, Andy, you know, could I, could we change this? Could I do that? And yeah, I don't know. A lot of people are creative like you, 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 you do painting, drawing, script writing and acting yeah. and photography. And that creativity you either have or you develop. Some people, I didn't have it. I had to develop that. But by now, if I look at a script, I definitely have an opinion immediately of how I want to do my bit, my part of it. Well, so you said something before about how it, makes, it made you more relaxed. And I did notice you're a very relaxed actor. Like, oh, you thanks. seem very relaxed. And, I mean, nobody seems to rattle you. I mean, all these big names are on set. And, you know, we're jumping into the scene. And you just, you're just you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I, I don't have much of an ego, but I, I have a kind of an attitude. Um, the other actors that are somebody, I don't know how to put it. Because I'm thinking, my wife will say, "Well, you get a picture with so and so," or my friend will say, "Well, picture." I said, "No, that they didn't ask me to take a picture." <laughs> I asked him. So, I took a picture with him. Well, yeah, we have some pictures. <laughs> Yeah. It goes back to what I said yesterday, uh, what the Joanna Bolden said to Laura Cunningham. And it was powerful enough that hearing it second day affected me too. Laura said when she heard Joanna Bolden say to her, You, you are enough. She cried. And I was taking Laura Cunningham's class out there at the studios and um I thought, gosh, that, that's exactly it. Well, we, we went over that the other day in that first episode. But uh, anyway, so that was my thought. Oh, I, I'm pretty cool, too. But, yeah. <laughs> don't be nervous, <laughs> you guys, whose names I can't mention. It's okay. Just go on about your business. I'm, well, so to wrap up then, what, what would you tell our young uh, actor friends out there? Uh, if, you, if you have any other skill or if you've gone to school to study medicine or law, go do that. <laughs> And well, do, you, you know, what? on the side. Well, you did say that. That was something that uh, I guess we could talk about real quick. Is that you did say I don't make a living at it. No, no. no. And and, uh, and I'm looking at you. I was like, 69 movies, and you don't make a living out of this. You know, no. residuals and it's beer money. <laughs> yeah, I never would have known. I, you yeah. know, and being in the business, I don't think I would have guessed that. I don't know. It's beer money. <clears throat> I work construction. Which also, you know, if you think about it, your day job can inform what you're doing on screen. I always did kind of physical labor. I, I was doing construction up, up till the time I retired. And I won't say my age, but I used to pick on, I would hoorah the other guys on the job site because I felt like I was as strong and tough. I could last all day long as good or better than they could, you know, and yeah. I'd, I'd mess with them. You know, if we're carrying something heavy, I'd say, okay, man, let's do some curls with this. Can you jog and carry this at the same time? And I got some sour looks, but uh, I don't know. That was always my thing. I was always very physical, but I, I work construction. That's how I paid the mortgage and, and put food on the table. And my wife, you know, she made better money than I did. And, and together we made it happen. And the film was a, a absolute passion but it didn't pay the bill. So I don't know, being in L.A., it may, may have been the same thing. You know, how many L.A. actors are, are making a, you know, the percentage of them are <clears throat> making a living? I don't know. Chris, I don't know. Do you, can you quit your job? Like, who, what else are you doing out there? Since we've got an actor on uh, on our thing, it's a good question. I don't know. I have a friend of mine who is making a living as a... There's some really great years and months, and then there's some really, you know... Yeah, absolutely. You know, I did a national commercial years and years ago, one time, and uh, that was nice. But that's once right. my whole career. You do, you know, some nice money. Did you do many commercials, or is it more? You know, they used to do some commercials here, not so much anymore. Either that, or they come here and they're not hiring guys that look like this. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. Uh, so Chris says, yeah, he can't, uh, he can't quit his kid's job yet. We'll get oh, you there, buddy. Job? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. You he's know, also a great photographer. You know what I've realized too, Andy, from talking to some of the actors that have come out here from L.A. that I've worked with? They aren't famous. They aren't recognizable, but they are making a living. Yeah. 
there's a whole lot of actors. I, I, I could be mistaken that are in LA making a living, and, and you wouldn't you wouldn't know them. I mean, they're right. you know, like a lot of my stuff. My friends have told me, "Hey, Kevin, I was in the kitchen the other day. The TV was on, and uh, I wouldn't have recognized you, but I heard your voice." And I ran into the and looked, and sure enough, it was whatever program you had been in, a brief little thing. And um, I think there's a lot of actors making a comfortable living that they aren't getting a lot of screen time, and that's okay too. On Lone Ranger, I was on that for a long time, but we're in wide shots and group shots and things, and one close up, and but it was nice money. Well, yeah, and, and I wasn't front and center, and I think there's a lot of people that may be in that category. We're still talking. You want to come join us? You want to come say hi? Go on. We got our DP over here. Come say hi. <laughs> yeah, we're live. Come on. Come say hi. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's right. No, no, no. Be sorry. It's very informal. No, it's okay. <laughs> Um, that's one thing you did say before, um, you know, or you saying that thing about your voice, like you have a very distinctive voice. Mm -hmm. Like I, if I heard you on TV now, I would be like, Oh, I know that. Guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, as sure. a matter of fact, Andy, uh, I went out to Santa Monica a couple of years ago to do some ADR for in the, in the trailer on YouTube. I'm sorry, I can't remember the director's name. I'm going to be in trouble now. But I finished the, I finished the, doing my bit, and he was very nice. He said, you know something about your accent and this and that. And he's very complimentary, and I, I was kind of taken aback. I thought, well, God, is it that special? But anyway, he commented on it. It was kind of nice. And you're the guy I don't who, think about it, you know. But, and you're the guy who, at one point, they literally dubbed your voice. Yeah. Because they yeah. said <laughs> years and years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, did I mention, I saw that director that – treated me so brutally a few years later he came back out here to shoot another western and i drove all the way to santa fe to audition for this guy back when you used to audition live in person and i did the audition he's looking at my headshot with a resume oh well we worked on bloody -blah, blah here and i said yeah i decided to drive up here and audition for you anyway <laughs> I'm not, assuming you didn't get the job. I did not get work <laughs> on his next project. <laughs> no. Well, that's another lesson for you. Yeah, yeah you can talk smack, but <laughs> it's not advisable. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's a good <laughs> story to tell. <laughs> and the residuals would have been beer money anyway. Yeah, so. right, beer money. <laughs> We're not even drinking beer. <laughs> uh. Isn't that funny? All right. I love telling that story. I've had more fun telling that story than I would have if I'd worked on that other project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. That's oh. for sure. Um, all right. Anything else about uh, about our movie here, about Surrounded, that uh, you want to say? Uh, you still got some, you got some big scenes coming up. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what we could talk about without doing a reveal or talking about too much. Well, let's just say, how about this? You get emotional. Right. Yeah. And uh, how do you work yourself up as an actor into that state? I've heard I, I've heard I, actors I, literally listen to music. No, I'm not going to listen to music. I don't know. I think as I've aged, I've, 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 I've gotten sentimental, and I think about how brief life is and how hard it is. How hard it is for everybody. <laughs> well, you're life depressing is, me. <laughs> well, it's a fact. Life is um, it's a struggle for all of us. No matter how much money you have or success health could go, or you could lose a family member. Life is harsh, and it's hard. I have pictures on, on my wall at my house of my grandfather working on an oil rig in the 30s. He had a sixth grade education. He grew up hard, starving, and that, that experience and sensibility has, has passed through a couple of generations of my family. I, I raised my kid to be grateful for everything, to be gracious to everyone, and to appreciate everything you have because you could lose it. Life is, is, is hard, and we're, all, <laughs> and we're all in this together. So the point being that I, um, it's easy to work up some compassion for, yeah. for other people, I think. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. We're on the stable here. Come on. Uh, man, it's a good time. I'm trying to reconnect. All right, we're back on, I think. We're back on. Yeah. Part of my ability to, to, I hope, to reach that emotion, and we'll see how successful I am, is to, is to think about the, the hard hard life my ancestors had. Start, literally, 
What's the William and Blake? It, what's the William? The Blake? William Blake thinks. It, I don't know the name of it. It's a big epic poem, but a part of it is about the price of experience. What is the price of experience? Do men buy it for a song or wisdom for a dance in the streets? No, it is sold for the price of all that a man hath, his house, his wife, his children. Wisdom is sold in the desolate market where none come to buy and in the withered field where the farmer plows for bread in vain. It is an easy thing to talk of in the tents of prosperity. Thus could I sing and thus rejoice. I don't know we lost it. Yeah, we, we lost it. I don't know. You guys catch that last part. That was great. Anyway, we're, hopefully, we're losing our hopefully the idea is to be vulnerable. You got to be vulnerable in front of other people. I don't know how you learn that except for being vulnerable. Some of this, you know, it's art. How do you draw? Do you measure a quarter of an inch over here in a thing? No, you, you practice. You stop. You stop the. Uh, you stop the, the limiting thing that adults have about being embarrassed in front of other people. You think about yeah. when you were a child, how you would play with reckless abandon, but didn't care if somebody was watching you play. You try to rediscover your youth and your ch your, your childhood. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard. I, after seeing, after living a life of different experiences i don't know how i'll deal with it but do you get emotional parts for, a lot like that uh not so much oh, no i gotta good. be the tough guy you know yeah, yeah, yeah. most of the time the tough guy it's gonna be good yep yeah, yeah. Uh, well i hope so anyway I, I don't know how to explain it you know I try to I have an empathy for other people they're having a hard time yeah you know you, you think you're doing well oh i've got this I've got success. I got my home here and my wife and everything. We'll see how it goes. You know, yeah. Um, in a way, reliving some of the heartbreak maybe you've had in previous times. That Stanislavski thing. You know, my acting coach said, "Look, you can't be like James Dean, where you get in the corner and make everybody wait for 15 minutes while you get in the fetal position and find something, <laughs> or just go totally out of control, neurotic over yourself. You got to find some happy medium of." He called it agitating that beat. You mm. agitate that beat and um, and try not to make it too crazy. Joe Edna Bolden, the casting director, has this phrase, and Kevin, don't make a meal out of it. <laughs> don't, she told me that once. Don't make don't, a meal out of it. You know That's great. Don't you know? make a meal out of it. Yeah. 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 Just, just do the thing. I don't know. I, I, if I could articulate it, it would be a formula, and it wouldn't be that, <laughs> right. that good. Right. I don't know. We'll see. I, I may fail miserably. <laughs> that's that's a trick is to be able to feel miserably in front of others. Yeah. Vulnerability. I don't know. We'll see. That's great. All right, I think Viewers will be the judge of that. Do you ever fake cry in real life to manipulate a situation? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't do that. I usually... I don't need to fake it. Get loud and ugly if I want my wife. When I'm, if my wife or daughter cries, I feel immediately deflated and like a... <laughs> Part of the anatomy. I don't want to mention on this. <laughs> no, I don't think. Uh, let's, let's get mad, and get ugly. Shut it down. Like my character in your movie. <laughs> yeah. See, that's also a part of my personality. The thing guy you're going to see. You know, I'm sorry to admit that ugly is part of my personality too. It doesn't come out very often, but when it does, it's. I don't know. You have to explore your own your own psyche, and don't be afraid to show it to others. And that's something we learn to hide as we as, as we grow up. Well, that's how I wrote that. I think like every character in that, I could kind of see their point of view. Mm -hmm. And like you step into their shoes and it's like, you know, here I am. I grew up this way and I hate everybody. And especially, you know, these people are, you know, I, you just try to put yourself in everybody's position. It's like you said, and, and see things from their perspective. Yeah. Even if it's a perspective, you don't want to be uh, in, but what is it? Like the bad guys realize they're the bad guys. Right, the bad guys think that they're the good guys. So, what is that? You know, it's a strong, unadulterated feeling that they're not afraid to show that most civilized people aren't. You're going to see that in my character. I never act that way, but yeah. if you can imagine what it would take internally for somebody to act that way, and then you agitate that beat, like like my coach said. Right. I don't know. Well, Stan thanks for Stanislavski. <laughs> I don't know. I'm freezing. I don't know. Are you freezing? Okay, one quick thing. Okay. Somebody yesterday asked what kind of role I would want to play that I have. I, oh, I told Andy, I, 
<laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. He told me man, today. I, just, I, you I still stayed don't know. awake last night thinking about that. I thought I didn't answer that person's question. I feel bad about it. I, I don't know. I still don't know. Maybe, you know. Well, like Indiana Jones? James Bond? Well, these Rocky? are all tough guys out in the world <laughs> kicking yeah, a but, certain part of the anatomy. And I, 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 I get cast as the bad border patrolman, the mean cop, the bad yeah, stagecoach, but, yeah, right. shotgun rider. I, you know, you know who I was? I was actually conversing on Instagram with Burgess Meredith's Burgess Meredith. Get out of here, niece. Wow. Yeah, and I told her because you know, as a kid, he was a penguin on back. back as a kid, when I wanted to be an actor, and I remember watching the Rocky movies, and Mickey's the guy who wanted to play. Is that right? Yeah, I was just like, oh, I didn't want to be the, you know, and, and to a certain extent, even Paulie, because I <laughs> absolutely love Burt Young. He's a great character actor. But I remember, like, everybody, you know, we'd play Rocky, and they'd be fighting. I want to play Clever Lang. I want to play Apollo. I want to be Rocky. And I'm like, I want to be Mickey. And I loved those parts. I loved wow. those parts. And he was also, the Penguin was also my favorite Batman character and I didn't even really? realize that it was the same actor I didn't even realize and there was something to these actors or this character actor or Burgess Meredith who people like this and even Burt Young who just brought something that's so rich he, he's funny without trying to be funny mm -hmm. he's heartbreaking without really trying to be heartbreaking he's instantly got a story with how he she was she was writing about how when he got the part of Mickey, how he bought the hat and he bought a stopwatch and he walked around his house and he would he would practice. So when he got to set uh, weeks and weeks later, it was natural. It looked like he had been doing the stopwatch mm -hmm. for years, yeah. you know, and it's like the, the level of effort he put into and somehow that translated to me on the screen and like, I, you know, the. The, the part I'm playing is a character actor part. They would mm -hmm. hire Burt Young, you know, for it. Um, and you know, you try to bring you try to bring something to it that just is beyond what's written on the page, beyond what's uh, you know maybe how, what, how another performer would play it mm -hmm. for sure. So anyway, I, I don't know. First of all, you should check out Burgess Meredith Legacy on Instagram. It's it's great. You know what relates to that and. Uh, I love to watch the Westerns and I'm all the time talking about them at home. There is a scene in High Plains Drifter where Clint Eastwood goes in to get a shave. Iconic scene. The point I'm trying to make is just what you're saying, Andy. Sometimes the supporting character actors, they, they bring more color and more chops to the scene than the main actor. They're bringing all the stuff that supports the main actor. So the main actor, at least in Clint Eastwood's case, could, and just be that stoic, tough guy that is good at the gunplay. Watch that barber in that scene. I'm sure maybe Andy could put a link down below. Yeah. That guy, I don't know where to begin. He's he's trying to shave Clint Eastwood. He's got these three bad guys coming in. He's trying to sell him a lilac thing, and his hands are shaking like this with, the with my family all the time. And I'll say, look, look, it bugs him to death. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm talking during the thing. Look, look, look at this barber, man. Look at this guy. Where did, where did they find him? He's, yeah, he's better than Eastwood. I hope <laughs> Clint Eastwood doesn't see this. Come out here, can't be part of mine, man. But uh, he, he, all Clint had to do was sit there getting shaved. And yeah. look at the bad guys. And this guy's lilac for an extra nickel. No, no, okay, no, no, okay. They bring, <laughs> they bring a flavor to the movie, and those yeah. are the, the, you know, you the quote curious. those guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, lilac. You know. <laughs> No, okay. Ed Asner, I had a conversation with Ed Asner once, and you know, he was a Lou Grant in the Mary Tyler Moore show. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he goes from this character in a comedy to playing a, in a drama, the same character, right? Remember the show Lou Grant, where it was like a drama of, mm -hmm. of him being a newspaper, you know, reporter or whatever, or a news reporter. And, and I remember him talking about that, and he goes, it was, he goes, there was, it wasn't fun being the linchpin of the show. Yeah, everybody else got to do everyone else got to do the fun stuff. Yeah, the heavy and, lifting. Yeah, I guess in a way. And I was thinking about Seinfeld like that. I mean, like as good as Jerry Seinfeld is, like that's not the part I would want to play. Yeah, you know, I'd want Kramer, right. or George, <laughs> or even Newman. You know, yeah. like all the characters in that was what made that show sure. great. And even not if you have a Costello show, or like Mr. Bunchy, but all the as good as those leads are, like they're surrounded by the greatest supporting cast. Yeah, you know, Hardy and. You know, 
James Finn, you know, and Billy Gilbert. I don't know, just I love, I love those parts. And to be able to, you know, they're also like a little more friendly, right? Like, not that the director doesn't care as much, but he's like, yeah, we got it. You know, he's not concentrating on us unless there's something specific we need to hit. And he's so generous, our director, so generous in letting us find our characters. And I, yeah. I, I told him the other day, I said, you know, how you direct, Anthony, I said, it's amazing. Like you take the actors and like, we're running around like sheep and you just kind of like guide us here and guide us there. And he's just like, it's all about the acting, you know? And he knows as an image maker and they're making beautiful images, but he's like, if the acting's not there, it doesn't matter how good it looks. And he like, he nailed how to direct us. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause he is, he is guiding us, guiding us, letting us, find the way and then he's like nope nope bring it in here no nope dude mm -hmm. i want you to do this you know i seen him give yeah. you give you notes you know i didn't want to say what but very simple one word yep like but blank. you knew exactly what he meant yeah, okay. and it changed your performance like that to Absolutely. give him exactly what he wanted you yeah. know and then uh working with loose reins just little things that guy's off the hoof you, you don't know what he's gonna do in the scene he, he won't do it the same way twice yeah. And, yeah. Right. And so I made up a line or two that I don't know. They'll just stand in there, I saying didn't. something to me or yeah. whatever. And, I, and so it just comes out. And I'm thinking, no other picture would they let me just talk. And he, and he did too. And he, he did. He's, you know, he's got this gun point. I'll, I'll give that away. And like he got me too. I'm like, he's like, don't do this or whatever. And I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, like, I saw that. Yeah. That I'm like that, that's that's perfect. Yeah. But but he got so. Uh, Lisa asked, "Do you try to steal the scene or blend in?" <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> huh. that's a good question. I'll try to, to you. I, it's to us, you. I don't yeah. know. Um, Most of the time, yeah, I don't. I try to. I try do, to draw yeah. as much attention to me as. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll have to admit, the other day we were in a wide shot. And I, had my hat, and I did something. Put my hat on. Lean over and spit. <laughs> Usually, you, you don't get away with too much of that. No, like, there was there was a one take when you were blocking my. Oh yeah, <laughs> your races, yeah. Man, you're and I'm like, come on, in the shot, I'm like, <laughs> you gotta put his hand down. Yeah, I heard this great story. I heard this great story. Well, did we answer that question? Though? No, I don't know. Did you? Well, well this is part no, of it. You, but go ahead. If you do too much of that, you'll be in trouble immediately. I would, th you know, yeah, usually. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I don't know. Depends on the. <laughs> depends. We should revisit that when we're done with this picture because. Yeah, it's always a temptation to spit or. You know, in these western, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sometimes. You know, I, I guess it depends on the moment about it. You do, you do have to be opportunistic. I'm thinking about, about a time when I was. I, I yes, is the answer. Sometimes <laughs> if you get away with it, I was a horseman extra on Lonesome Dove, and I was way deep in the shot, and I knew it, and I was on a horse, so I maneuvered my way out in the street. And when all the action was happening down there with Tommy Lee Jones, I was standing up in the stirrups and doing this and looking around. And when I saw it on TV, I could see myself doing that. And I thought, why didn't somebody come tell me not to do that? Because I was working it. And I, I got away with it. And that was my first time. So the answer is yes. Sometimes yeah. you do that. You do. As long as I think the, the thing is, as long as, long as it works. works. As long as it works. You can't real. You don't want to be distracted. Right? You don't, if, if, it's, if it's going to ruin the scene, you don't want to do it. Head, you know? Right. Yeah, you want to you want to be the best person in the scene. <laughs> the most important thing is contributing to the story, telling the story, not thinking about right yourself. I mean, at my level, I'm not not at that level. You know, I'm just glad to be there and do what it takes to the story forward, not to get fired or cursed. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. It's it's in a way everybody it, everybody's performance in this is so low key. They're all weirdly stealing the scenes from moment to moment from each other, right? It's nobody like you were talking. You know, you don't shout, right? You're you're like the boiling pot, you know. And there is something to that. There's, I mean, I've never had actors like this one. They're trying to. They're all the leads are all trying to pull out dialogue. They're like, we're talking too much. Yeah, you know, and and Anthony was like, "You write a lot of dialogue," and the director's like, "You write a lot of dialogue. We need to pare it down. We need to pare it down." And and which is funny is I said to him, I said, "Well, I don't even think dialogue's that important in a weird way. Like to me, as a writer, the dialogue is supposed to be punctuation to the picture. Like yeah. you, you should be able to turn off 
sound uh, and see and understand everything that's going on. <laughs> and he looks at me, he's like, you think that? <laughs> yeah. Who was it? Louis B. Mayer or somebody when talkies came out, he says, who wants to hear actors talk? I don't know who, one of those old yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah right. Before, yeah, who yeah. wants to hear actors talk? Yeah. There was a scene, uh, my friend Justin Tate told me this story, and I can't remember what movie it was in, but it was a Clint Eastwood directed movie. And there was a scene, I guess, it was on this second floor of an apartment building and somebody hands this woman a letter and she's just supposed to hand it to somebody else. And she opens up the door and she's like, oh, trying to steal the moment, right? <laughs> Throws in some dialogue and, you know, Glenn with goes, cut! Doom, doom. He starts walking up the stairs real slow. Walking up the stairs. Goes, <laughs> goes up to the set, goes to the door and he's, he opens it and he says, sir, I can't tell you how much this scene is not about you. Yeah. <laughs> don't make a meal out of it. I've been right. told that. Don't, don't make, make a, a meal, meal out, out of it. it. All right, David John is on. Ryan's a really good writer, friend of mine, one of my closest friends. He's a novelist. Oh wow! Yeah, take some discipline. Yeah, and he's uh, he's a screenwriter, and he's got a project brewing. We can't talk about him assuming right now, Ryan. And Ryan, actually, I got to talk to you about. Uh, I need some scripts from you. <laughs> I got to hit you up when this is over. Um, opportunities came up. Uh, so anyway, I don't know what else we got. It's cold today. We're I don't know. if we got any more BS, we can save it for another episode. Let's save it for another I'm episode of, and I I'm out of beer uh, uh, coffee. Uh, coffee. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> I'm out of <coughs> coffee. Yeah. yeah, we'll save it for next time. And I, I think burp, you should burp, be there. Beer, Co uh, coffee. <laughs> I think you should be there when we interview Luce. Oh man. Yeah. We get, we gotta figure out you better have a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Things just get crazy. So all right, that's it. We got I think disconnected a couple times in this, but we're still going. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm gonna put uh, some clips of you in the links below. Um, make sure you subscribe, watch the little videos, and uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. And uh, thanks, Kevin, so You're much welcome. for joining. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. It's a, pleasure. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you were